Today, we're in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and we're visiting a haunted ghost town. Okay, do it, jump, jump! <laughs> if you saw our last video, you know we have some very special friends joining us for today's adventure. Meet the Snow Dogs Vlogs family. Jessica, her hubby Jamie, and their obnoxiously adorable huskies Kira and Memphis. You've probably already seen their YouTube channel, but if you haven't, make sure to check it out. The level of cuteness and joy these pups and their owners bring to the world is sure to make any day brighter. Today we're exploring a really unique state park in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We're at a place called Fayette State Park and it was actually an old mining town in the late 19th century. The crazy cool thing about this is it's not like any normal state park. The buildings that are here are the same from when over 500 people used to live here and work in the mines. In the mid-1800s, Fayette was a major iron ore hub. Ore was shipped into the town, melted down, and prepped for transport to steel making centers. And we went from Lake Superior, now we are at Lake Michigan. Yep. Okay, we're gonna enter an old machinist shop. Let's check this out. Master mechanics at the time made $75 per month. Meanwhile, machinists only made $1.80 per day. The Jackson Iron Company operated in Fayette for 23 years and produced over 230,000 tons of charcoal iron. It was a busy place, but by the mid-1890s, the iron industry began to decline, which would ultimately lead to its abandonment and the eerie feeling you get walking these once busy streets and bustling buildings. This building behind us is where all of the accounting for the company was done. Get this, their payroll was $5,863 a month for over 163 workers. That's mind blowing. When people came to visit the mining town, this is the hotel they stayed in. When a laborer came to stay at the hotel, they paid 15 cents per night for a single bed in the hotel dormitory, or 10 cents per night for double occupancy which was about 10% of their daily wages. And yes, it was owned by the company. Double dipping much? You can almost feel the spirits of the ghosts that used to live here. <laughs> This is where the iron was melted down in these huge white furnaces. Here the heat, roar, and odor of the smelting operation merged with the shouts of men, whirl of engines, and shrill screams of steam whistles. Can you even imagine? On the ground here at the rocks, which Jamie and I do all the time, and we found slag. And if you guys don't know, slag is a byproduct of the smelting. So when they smelt things in the kilns and everything that you guys have seen, 
the impurities are left behind and it turns out with, I mean, there's literally just pieces of it everywhere. It kind of resembles glass. You can see how it's a little bit shiny. What is that piece of it? This one. But look, in this one, you can see the rust from the ore that was in it. Yeah, they would add sand and everything to the metals. And the impurities would stick to the sand. Yep, and then this is what glass. they were left with. So these pieces of rock that you're seeing here are from what, the late 1800s. That one's green green. Yeah. <laughs> it's light too. Light too? Yeah. So you can see how it's like shiny and it's like glass-like. And purple. That's cool. And then, I think the puppies have decided that they'd rather play in the water than with the rocks. <laughs> yep. They're like, we're not into history, we want to swim. That's a big step for me. I'm short. You did it. I did it. <laughs> Walking around the town and through the buildings, you can't help but imagine what the lives of these people were like who lived and worked here. Mostly immigrants from Europe and Canada, these people were far away from their homes. And although they were paid a wage, their options to leave were limited due to resources and how remote they it was, and really still is today. Now we're walking up to the big man's house. The big man, AKA the superintendent, lived in what the Fayette residents called the White House, which you find after walking past the docks and up a winding trail. But before you catch a glimpse of the manor, you arrive at the neighboring home. and it was positioned strategically right behind the house of the guy who ran the place. I feel like that means he probably got preferential treatment. He had the good insurance. <laughs> Going up. Welcome to the second floor. Those, uh, those been, cookies are stale. They've been there since the, since the 1880s. Yeah, but, but that cheese is still good. You can give me some 1880 cheese any day, all day. I'm assuming they would taste a little plasticky. What do you think? Sure. <laughs> oh, got a partner back here. Oh, yeah, look at that. This looks like it came straight out of Westworld. There. There's the big guy's house. There it is. While the White House had many unimaginable luxuries compared to the laborers' homes, it didn't have running water, and most superintendents and their families left within three years. Rumor has it, living in this town wasn't exactly easy. Professional apple they're, picker. They're so little though, but they're perfect. That's good. I'm pretty excited about this. I don't think I've ever just eaten an apple off the creek. If it's, if it's no good, throw it away. Yeah, I think it's too different. Did you try it? 
I've never eaten an apple right off the tree. Mm -hmm. That thing is freaking delicious. Yeah. <laughs> now I just hope we don't die. It's a uh, certified organic free range apples. Mm hmm. You yeah. approve? Yeah. How about you, Memphis? Memphis no. is like, no, will you bite a piece off and feed it to me? <laughs> How about you? Nobody. Yeah, yeah, bite a piece off and feed it to me. That's how that's how it works, yeah. Yeah, that good? <laughs> Are you, no, you didn't even eat it, huh? You're like, nah. Memphis doesn't good. like apples. Not like Vera does. Memphis likes the apples in our yard. Oh yeah, that's great. I was done. Okay, that's it. It's super good. I was say, that, that seemed a little dumb, but. Yeah. Act a little bit tarter. Mm hmm. So, this building is the town hall. And you'll notice a very important sign out front it's for the barber. Unfortunately, no one is here to cut Daniel's hair. That's where Daniel needs to go. I feel like people in the 1880s would have appreciated this beautiful mane right here. So uh, I don't think there would have been too much work to be done. Maybe a little trim. That's about it. With over 500 people living here, the average family size of a worker was six to seven people. So that's quite a few kids, and for those kids, they needed a school. How cute is this? And all the rules are in cursive, so obviously that was still taught back then. Big Springs. Located in Palm Book State Park, the Big Spring, which was named Kitchety Kippy by the Native Americans, meaning Mirror of Heaven, is the largest natural spring in the Upper Peninsula. And if you're planning the ultimate Michigan road trip, this place cannot be missed. A short walk into the park will bring you to a unique looking raft where you can climb aboard to take a tethered ride across the Emerald Green Springs. This was Kira's first time here, and she was so excited to see what all the fuss was about. So blue. You see them fish? Oh, what do you think, Kira? <laughs> She's like, how do I get down there, guys? <laughs> guys, I would like to eat them fish, please. <laughs> yes. Do you see them? Okay. How old are they? Uh, this one's eight and this one's two. Ooh. This one wants to go fishing, apparently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> boat allows you to see in the middle so you can see straight down to the bottom of the springs which is approximately 45 feet deep 
aka about the same height as these trees that are around the border. This place is beautiful. It's also the largest natural springs in Michigan. You have to go further north and you have to really experience Michigan because the Upper Peninsula is totally different than the Lower Peninsula. So, you know, I would come visit this state, but I live here, so I get to visit it every day. <laughs> With another successful day of exploring the Upper Peninsula of Michigan under our belt, it was time for the Snow Dogs Vlogs crew to head back home and for us to begin our journey towards New York City to run a marathon. And yes, obviously, we now want husky pups of our own, but that's for another day. Until then, make sure to wander local this week, friend. As you know, it's good for the soul.